This is Dave again out at the property and uh, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the hunting trip I took to VA. So you know I moved to Tennessee and so I headed back to VA for the Virginia for the start of muzzleloader. So I spent the first week there and so it was a pretty successful trip. Um, also you'll see some photos blended into this discussion about uh, how it turned out but just to run through the scenario and talk about the deer I got the last day I was there. So drove up Sunday and spent the week with my uh, good friend, Ron. And, um, and so our first day hunting was Monday. So Monday we go out to um, AP Hill and uh, we hunt um, a really good spot. And we think uh, it should be productive. And so uh, in the morning we don't get good setup so we don't really see anything. But in the afternoon we thought, you know, we each are in pretty good spots. I take a spot that my buddy had used uh, that morning, um, which uh, with the setup I had, it was really in a good area. I think a food plot was about uh, 50 yards off to the one side of it. You're in an area with a lot of uh, acorns and also uh, some pine. And so there's some grass areas, so it's a pretty good area. He goes down towards a water area with a swamp area. And so he hunts down there. Um, we don't uh, see anything. Uh, my buddy jumps a deer in the afternoon going into the stand, but we really don't see anything. So uh, so Monday's gone. Um, Tuesday, we head out to the same place, AP Hill. We go to hunt the same spot. Um, that morning, I don't, I don't see anything. Uh, but, you know, the indicators are uh, things are going to turn a little bit. The weather's uh, gotten a little bit uh, better and uh, it's still uh, cool. But uh, indicators are it should be good movement, we think. So um, I get up my stand and he gets into his. I see, um, I don't know, around three o'clock, I see uh, two deer, uh, doe and a, a yearling uh, feeding in a grass area. Uh, and, uh, and then, I don't know, about a few minutes later, I hear my, my buddy shoot and he shoots at a small buck, but he misses. Um, where he's at and he's seen some action down there too. Uh, a little bit later I see another doe come in and feed. This area, grass area, is about 80 yards off to my right. And so um, in AP Hill, muzzleloader, it's buck only except for the opening day which I missed with Saturday. So uh, we can't, uh, can't shoot a doe and uh, unfortunately I have to end my hunt there because I have a dinner appointment so if buddy wants to eat see me and so I go uh, to eat uh, supper with him and so I in my hunt I did see three nice doe and so the next day we had some work I got to do on my property so we're gonna hunt my property in Partlow so we spend the next two days hunting there on um, Wednesday um, don't see anything in the morning uh, but in the afternoon my buddy shoots a nice doe and so he's got the uh, back food plot area and he does a nice job, uh, gets a nice day. Uh, we can't find it uh, Wednesday night. We search for it. The blood trail is very minimal. So we uh, Thursday morning we set out and we do a grid search and sure enough he finds it. Ends up being it's like 30 yards from the food plot. But went in a direction we didn't we couldn't know because there was no real blood trail. Um, so you know we missed it. Um, so we come back and hunt again Thursday. Thursday we uh, don't see anything in the morning. Uh, and in the afternoon, my buddy shoots a small doe, uh, about a year length. So, um, so my buddy Ron, he's got two does uh, to his credit. So um, pretty good uh, hunt in my property. Plus I get all the work done I needed to do. And so I feel pretty good about it. Thursday, we go out to a place in uh, South, uh, South Virginia you know, around the Scottsville area. It's a small farm. It's a beautiful place. And uh, we've always had good luck there before. Um, shot some nice my buddy shot a nice buck there a few years ago. We always get something. So uh, we're setting up. Uh, but Thursday or uh, Friday turns out to be a, a really bad weather day. Uh, wind is blowing. Never really drops below 10 miles an hour. And it's it's a cold wind. And so um, deer aren't moving. And we spend the whole day up in trees uh, freezing. So we, we, we don't get anything. So we head, head back home, back to his house and, you know, spend the night. And then... The next day we decide Saturday we'll go out to APL and another buddy's going to join us. Uh, his name's Robert. So we're hunting. Um, that morning we go out to a spot and my friend Ron, he shoots a spike. So he's done at APL. He can't 
uh, hunt anymore. You get one deer a day if you shoot out there. And, and so he's got his, his uh, deer. So um, around uh, three o'clock, uh, so I go to a different spot uh, than, when my, than the one I was at with my buddy. And so I go to a different spot and around three o'clock, I get a text from my friend Robert and, and he's shot a pretty good size uh, uh, body wise uh, four point. But uh, ends up being it's a three year old four point. It's it's pretty good sized deer. Um, dressed out as seventy eight pounds, which is which is good for Virginia. So um, so then around uh, three thirty, I see um, I see I hear some movement. I turn and look to my left, and I'm up in a stand um, about twenty fifteen maybe maybe fifteen yards off of a food plot. Um, and I've got it situated, so I'm kind of facing the side of the food plot a little bit, and so I can see behind me and and to the and all around the food plot. And what I'm thinking is, late day, uh, some some action will come out of the uh, surrounding areas because there's a lot of nice brush surrounding the food plot. So I'm thinking that's going to happen. And I hear this noise, and I look, and uh, and so there's a there's a, a decent sized buck. And uh, I can see it's got nice antlers. I can't see its body yet, but I can see its antlers and I see it slowly moving up. And so I, I'm sitting down and I shoot left handed. And so it's to my left. And so I'm, the way I'm sitting, I have to actually stand up in the stand and turn around. Now, for those of you who think deer hunting is easy and the hunter's got the advantage, now let me tell you, I just told you I saw a deer and uh, I'm in my stand and I'm sitting and I shoot left handed. Well, I've got to stand up in my stand and rotate myself around without that deer hearing me so I can hold my gun and get a shot. Otherwise, I can't shoot at it because I am i can't shoot right-handed. And so I have no shot um, at it. And so um, now here's all the things that can go wrong um, when you're hunting deer. So the deer could decide to stop and not approach any further and you don't get a shot and it just moves off. And that's just the way it goes. Sometimes that happens. The deer can hear you. The deer can smell you. The deer can see you. You <clears throat> can be uh, spooked by a coyote. There could be another deer that approaches. All these things can change what happens in the next few minutes. And you could miss the shot. Your muzzle loader could miss fire. Your primer could be a foul. Um, there's just a ton of things that can go wrong. All right, so I'm in the stand. Back to the store. So, yep, that deer slowly walks into my view, and uh, and I have a, you know, it's a thicket, so there's only certain areas you can shoot. Of course, if it walks all the way out in the food plot, I got a nice shot too. But I figure the best opportunity I have, because most of those bigger deer never actually go out in the food plot. They're just checking to see, and they probably smell the doe, just checking to see what's out in that food plot, or maybe another buck. Whatever it is, he's going through this thicket, and sure enough, I get a uh, a view on it and so I I'm turned around and I put the gun on it and I shoot all you see is smoke so black powder that's all you're gonna see because that's how it works it's like a, a gun from the Revolution War like a musket and so poof, big puff of smoke and for the hunter it seems like hours before it dissipates but it just takes a second or so and I look and the deer hadn't moved I'm like oh crap I missed and so I I watched that deer and slowly it makes a you it walks a slow circle and it goes around and it comes back around and stands right in front of my stand but close like it did a circle and comes in 30 yards probably comes around and stands in front of my stand kind of looks up at me but I don't know that it actually sees me and it turns around and faces the food plot and then it starts to wobble a little bit and then it, it sets down. And I can tell it's laboring a little bit, but I don't see any blood. I don't see where I hit it. And I have a really good view of it. So I'm like, oh gee, you know, I gotta be really quiet here. So I reload my muzzleloader. If you ever been in a tree stand trying to reload a muzzleloader, it's not the easiest thing, but I'm prepared. And so I got my speed loader, which is just a little capsule. It's got your, um, 
got your um, musket uh, wadding, your uh, caliber, your bullet, and your uh, black powder. And so I, I get it loaded, and I put a new primer on it, and I aim. Now the thing to understand about black, about the shooting muzzle loader, black powder, it leaves a lot of residue, and so when you shoot it, you don't necessarily get as accurate a shot the second time. So I know this. And my gun, the second shot, usually has a tendency to get the right to. I aim and I hit the deer and, and it, it dies right away. And so it's it's done. And so, um, so I'm like, oh no, I, I, I can't believe this. I look, it's a pretty good sized deer. It's a point. And so you'll see a picture of it. So, um, so anyways, I get down out of the stand and I walk over the deer and, and I, um, you know, I drag it over and my buddies come over and we're looking at it. And you can see the first shot did hit it. It actually hit it right behind the front shoulder and, and, um, and hit its heart. And so it put it, it put it down. That's why I was laboring. Uh, but the, the way the shot went, it went through and then, um, a part of the bullet actually, uh, exited out on the other side, right below or right where his front armpit, I guess would be and into his leg and broke his leg. And so that's why it was wobbling so much. So, um, so interesting. I'd never have seen a deer uh, move closer to where the shotgun, but obviously it tells the deer didn't know what had happened to it. And so um, I felt very fortunate. I was uh, blessed to get it. So I want to add one more thing um, about deer hunting. So I talked about all the things that go wrong when you actually see a deer. Now, the other thing you got to keep in mind is Look at the number of hours I put in before I actually had a deer I could shoot. I saw several deer, um, but it, I couldn't shoot them because they were does and it was buck only at APO. And then at my house, on my property, I didn't see any deer. It was, Ron was in the hot spot and he saw the deer. Uh, so frustrating for me, but you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. Um, but as my, as my friend Ron says, you gotta put the time in. And so, um, and it's true, uh, time in the woods is what will lead you to seeing a deer. Um, you can do other factors like getting a high up in the stand and controlling your scent and you know approaching where you're going to hunt wisely and stuff like that. Those all are great factors. Uh, but time in the woods to understand where the deer are, how they're moving, will make a huge difference. And that's what we did, and so that's why it paid off. And so again, it's a, it's a very uh, good feeling, and I do feel really blessed about it. And so, um, so anyways, I did get a deer. It was, uh, um, Saturday, my last day of hunting. And, um, we, you know, I think it was around three 30, the action occurred, might've been a little bit later and dark happens, you know, around five. So I was within the last couple hours of, of, uh, the hunt. And so, uh, uh, you'll see some pictures of it. And so it was a pretty happy uh, moment for me. So that's my hunting trip in, uh, Virginia. And so, uh, um, anyways, a good time. And I think uh, my friends, Ron and Robert, uh, for uh, being there Saturday and helping me and uh, Ron hosting me the whole week let me stay at his place so it was a good week anyways uh, that's it for uh, for now